Hey, everybody, welcome back to the Big Money Influencer Summit. I'm your host, Sienna, and today I'm talking with Mary Glass. She is the founder of Soul Success CEO, and we're going to have a conversation with her about what she does and how she can, how she helps her clients change their lives and change their branding and how she helps her clients connect with their audience. Welcome, Mary. Glad that you're here. Thank you, Sian. It's a great to be here. Great. So my first question for you is, in a nutshell, what do you do? What do I do in a nutshell? I help women primarily who are entrepreneurs or professionals who raise themselves to a new level, either they're beginning professionals or they've been out there for a while and they feel like there are so many parts of them that they're just hiding or they're not bringing forth into what they do. And they're just underperforming for what they personally know they can do. They know there's so much more they have to give, but they're kind of feeling stuck or blocked or trying to fit themselves into this cookie cutter box that um, they've kind of created in their mind. And uh, I help them break through that and just totally reveal all the deepest parts of their soul, heart and soul and joy and purpose and life and life and business purpose and create this unique business structure and idea for them that is um, going to fulfill all these things that they're fabulous at doing, all these gifts that they've got. They kind of forget that they have these gifts. I know that sounds crazy, but we always forget the things that we do the best. We can, I can see the ones that say CN can do, but I might forget that I'm really good at X, Y, and Z. It's just part of human nature. So I help them to see it and they're like, wow, it's like this big revelation and, and I'm getting it from them. I just do these deep dive conversations with them and we take layer after layer and show all these great things they've done in their life and all the things that light them up and bring them joy and the things that they've always dreamed of doing and combine this really cool, unique thing that they can do in a way no one else in the world can do it because it involves their personality also. And so we bring them to the table, all of them, and in that way, um, move forward in the business they have while incorporating these pieces or create this new business. And then they move forward in that. That's awesome. That's so important to be clear on who you are, especially when you're presenting yourself as a businesswoman. Yeah. So do you work with strictly, sound like you work with women mm -hmm. and you work with entrepreneurs, do you work with anybody else? I have worked with some men and um, I also help them What's and I don't know that men have, uh, they may or may not have someone that can do this deep listening that I do with people. I have a, a background as an attorney. I'm not practicing currently, but I learned this really deep laser focused listening technique as an attorney. And now I, I view it through the heart's lens and I really listen to these people and I can see intuitively behind what they're saying. And I can see like, wow, you're really compassionate or you have a heart for this. And then I'll tell, I'll say that and it'll be like, wah, because it is what they are. It's really who they are, but they feel like that's been covered over or buried is, is that keeps coming through to me. And I can relate because I did that for years. So that if they feel like, wow, all these parts, like if I love to hunt or if I love to fish, Oddly enough, that can be part of your business, whether it's, you know, Wall Street or whatever, you can have that as part of who you are, who you bring to the table. And all these other people who love to hunt and fish are going to go, I'm going to pick Frank because Frank has that in common with me too. So there's an instant connection going on here. And the more they know you personally, the more they're going to connect with you. And that's when you get people to know, like, and trust you because you're bringing the real full you to the table. So yes, I have worked with some men and I've also helped them with deep release type things. Also, that's another thing that I do. If you've got blocks, mental, physical, emotional, spiritual, uh, I have a lot of techniques. I've been trading in, I have a yoga certification and tons of like meditation and uh, energy release. I'm certified in a bunch of energy release techniques and I, I do work with the Holy Spirit and we do this co-creational thing where it's a partnership. Um, and then all these, they get all these crazy downloads while we're doing it and um, things that they never thought of before. And, and uh, I think 
we mentioned before, when we were talking before this call, I had this one client and um, she was feeling really insecure. <laughs> we got on this um, clarity call and uh, I know no matter who you are, you have fabulous gifts. And I just know it because I know who made you and he put all these things in you. And I know if you are anywhere near my age or half my age, you have experienced so many things in your life. You've overcome so many things. The fact that you're, you know, talking to me and we just forget them again. So this one woman, she, um, she was, uh, had been in sales, you know, this history of sales. I'm thinking, wow, you must be really good at that. So then we start talking and I'm <clears throat> kind of doing through this process and all of a sudden, she says, I just remembered I was the vice president of Toastmasters. <laughs> and I was like, what? Because that takes tremendous confidence. You know, you have to be really good at it for you to be the vice president of it. So people forget this, even that kind of a thing that seems like really obvious to the rest of us. And then another woman felt like she just didn't have anything to offer. And I, I don't even know what I could do. I don't, I haven't really done anything. I said, oh, really? So then we go through the job. She used to be a hospice nurse. I mean, that takes the most highest level of compassion. You have to have a tremendous skill. You have mm -hmm. to have a lot of knowledge and you have to have this beautiful heart for people. And you have to be able to withstand tremendous. You can't take it on personally because there's no way you could survive that with all these people, you know, that are passed away and so forth. So it's like, people don't see these things in themselves. So I help them to see that. And let's say a guy's got a military background and he kind of forgot about that. And I say, hey, boy, you have to have to put into your thing that you are a veteran because all these people that are veterans are going to see that and they're going to think connection. Oh, I'm going to go to this guy over that guy because this guy's a veteran and he gets me. He's been there. So it's all of this kind of stuff like that, that, um, you may or may not think of at the time. And then it's the sense of humor. People love the sense of humor. And if you can take some serious, really serious situation and someone's talking about it and we're doing a process where we're kind of working through it and releasing it. And then I just think of something absurd. I'll say it and they start laughing. <laughs> so I've just learned to go ahead and do it. And they're like, oh my gosh. And they, you know, so it breaks the tension, but it teaches them that they can do that too. They were just totally, you know, in this thing and this came up and then they realized, oh my gosh, that is funny. So it's everything we do teaches you, you can shift on a dime from, from this mindset and heart set where you were. And sometime when you're not with me, you're going to think of that goofy thing when you get a little bummed out and you're going to be able to start laughing about it. So, um, I mean, the, a woman's mom had passed away the morning that we had our coaching call. And I, I didn't know that till she got on and she's like, I really needed this. And then we start talking and then she tells me something really crazy rude that her mom would say in this like way that you can get away with it. Cause you're old. And <laughs> like insulting but funny like boing and um and then we started la I was like oh I can't even I start, started cracking up and then she's thinking about her mom saying this crazy thing to her friend and then I said I'm telling you right now you're gonna go to her service and you're gonna be looking around there's gonna be someone that looks like I won't say what she said but what she described and you're gonna start cracking up and it's gonna be inappropriate <laughs> so she starts laughing. So it's just, it's just this thing where you can learn to find the joy in anything. And you can learn that you don't get trapped in these mindsets and heart sets that everything is temporary, including joy and happiness, of course, but every single emotion is part of the whole range of being alive. And you just don't stay in any one thing forever. You kind of dive down like you're diving into a pool and then you come back up for air and then you can dive back in. So once people start learning, wow, I don't have to be trapped in these things. I don't have to be trapped in this box that I thought I had to live in of my identity. That's not even me. Um, I can be who I am. I can uh, express my emotions exactly the way I am. I can bring my sense of humor. I can bring all these unique things that I'm interested in. And again, this works for any, everyone, really. I've just worked for with more, the numbers have been more with women. <clears throat> I've also helped people that have had been facing um, terminal illnesses 
men included, and help them with the mindset thing and the emotion thing and to overcome a lot of what was going on there. And, and they've, I mean, it's just been this profound thing. So you can work with people. And how does this tie in with wealth? Wealth is all about <clears throat> loving yourself, loving God, and loving your neighbor. And when you have that love, then you're going to start inviting the wealth you're going to be welcoming it instead of pushing it away i'm talking about physical mental i mean the whole nine yards and and monetary wealth abundance of all types great relationships they're going to come to you they're going to be attracted to you and you're going to the other big part is receiving them a lot of us have these things that are like knocking on the door right there and we're like ignoring them or we're pushing them away so <clears throat> one of the big keys is receive be receptive invite this in and these are all a lot of things have to do with your mindset and your emotions and your thoughts so if somebody's got this thought pattern where oh, i can't do anything or i haven't done anything or i'll always be poor whatever you have to disconnect that and the way you do it is you catch it every single time you think that you start being aware, aware, aware. And then every time, then after you do that, you say, is that true? Obviously not. That's false. Well, if that's false, then what's true? And you start doing this pattern where every time, every time that comes up, every time, and you're creating a new neuro pathway and disconnecting the old one till you get to a point where you don't say, you know, I, will, I don't even want to say it, but I'll always be blank. You know, you, it's not even there anymore. You're thinking like, I am abundant. I attract abundance constantly. Wealth flows to me 24 seven with grace and ease. I mean, these are things you're actually thinking. It's not like you're reading them, you know, on some piece of paper going out, oh, you know, <laughs> I mean, you're actually, believe, you're, you're internalizing them. You're actually feeling them. And then there's another step where you feel the way that someone who has the level of wealth in all the aspects of wealth feels having it. So you start to have it now, presently. Like if I have this wealth of fabulous relationships and I'm doing what I was put here to do and I'm on fire and I have all this income and I'm creating charities and it's just, I have all these great people working with me and for me, it's fantastic. And the clients are getting impacted. It's, oh, I mean, I'm just rocking it. You're already feeling that. And when I say that, even, I think anyone listening is like, wow, yeah, that would be awesome. So, and maybe you're already there and you're like, it is awesome. So then you go to the next level. What would be even more awesome? And you can create it up here because everything that is in existence was created up here first. Mm -hmm. Of course, the big guy created it. But then we, on, on this plane, we created up here first. We create it with your thoughts, feelings, emotions, and beliefs. And then everything follows suit. Your body follows suit regarding health. That's how that happens. It's up here first. And so does everything out here in the, in the external world. Like if you think you're going to be wildly successful, if you think I got this, I'm really good at this and you know it, you're not just saying it, you know it, then people are going to start hiring you left and right because they can see you know it. And when you believe in it, then they're going to know I can trust her because she believes it. I can see it all over her face. There's no question. And that's how you keep this whole wealth thing snowballing, snowballing. So <clears throat> have I said enough for now? See it. <laughs> yeah, you um, totally answered my next question. It's like, what is your um, thoughts around wealth? <laughs> and after that, so I jumped the gun. <laughs> No, it's all good. It's good because well, does um, definitely connects with your mindset and how you think of it and your the way you, your relationship with money. Mm -hmm. So that's definitely um, everything you said was great. So you have a process. Do you mind sharing with me, with the audience, what your process is and getting that you take your clients through? Um, I have a number of one, of them. I was trying to figure out what I could do with, with people today and with you, CN. Um, I wasn't sure which one. Like I do an actual thing where it um, takes people to a different state of consciousness, really. Um, <clears throat> and we start unplugging anything that's not true, that's a false belief, that's out of alignment with um, what divine the divine creator would want for you. And so that would be any false beliefs about I'm not 
I won't even put the words out there, but you know, with your worthiness, I'll word it that way, your, your, your lovability factor, your success factor, um, whether people are going to be attracted to you, whether you're going to just um, do everything you were put here to do, all these things. There's a certain way you can tell yourself that is self-defeating, but the beautiful thing is it's also self-creating when you flip that around backwards and you start saying those things to yourself like, I'm going to rock this. I'm going to knock this out of the park. In fact, I'm already knocking it out of the park. And everyone can see that this just, I'm just lit up by this for real. And they start getting lit up and there's like, yeah, this is exciting. And they think I want to feel like that. And so both of those things are self-fulfilling prophecies. And um, so I do one thing where we kind of, I mean, I do kind of a flowing thing. So this is why it's a little bit of a challenge here for me, because I do a bunch of techniques in a row and just whatever's going on with the person, I shift to that. And then if something comes up like, well, I did it, I don't believe blah, blah, blah. Then we go with that and we kind of unwrap that mindset. So, um, and I do a drill down to their deepest soul purpose, not just what they think is a surface level. We do that and then we start going into the feelings and the emotions and what is true to your soul and what lights you up and what is the core reason for being alive. Then you get down to the real purpose. And once we hook into that, I get there, um, all the emotions around that. And we start visualizing, they visualize, they tell me exactly what they would like to create. And then we go down to what's the house look like? How many bedrooms? Um, what are you doing? Describe to me what you're doing. What are all these? What's the monetary goal? Let's get specific. What would that be? We're talking about a 12 month thing. Um, we do all of that so that they start to, and then they go there, you're there, how are you feeling? And, you know, so anyway, I'm telling you all these things, so I'm not sure how much, what you want me to do here. Oh, that's awesome. Um, I'm just going to say one thing. Yes. And then um, just to tell the audience, I have done some um, past work with Mary before, and which was amazing and awesome and a lot of breakthrough, but I'm an open book and you can, whatever you or whatever you want to do, whatever you want to do, go ahead and let's just play. Okay. Um, let's see. All right. We'll see in. Um, what is your, what is your major thing that you would like to see happen in your life right now? If anything in the world, n no limits, what would you like to see happen? I would like to get really clear on moving to Arizona. Okay. And I write things down so I can go back and tell you what you said, <laughs> because uh, as we go with this, I want to know, and I'm going to mirror it back to you. Okay. Get really clear on moving to Arizona. So um, why do you want to move to Arizona? I like the, um, the way I feel when I'm there. I like the, I love the desert and I love the sunshine and the, the weather where I'm living at now in California I'm not a big fan of the snow or okay. the fire or the smoke from the smoke from the fire. So okay. ready All to right. move and try to know what your pain points are. <laughs> We're gonna create that other thing though. So we see what you don't want, but if we think here's an example, if you think about that a lot, guess what you're doing? Creating. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> okay. So and we all do it. So this is just an awareness thing like, wah. Okay, so we're gonna shift to, wow, I like moving to Arizona. I like, I like the way it feels. I like the desert. I like the sunshine. So we're gonna focus on that, what we want to create. What else about um, Arizona do you like or moving to Arizona? The activities, being able to go in the out, to the outdoors, I have some friends there and oh. just being able to kind of create a new life. Yeah. Know, oh, yes. Yes. Sunshine, yes. So. Okay. All right. Um, create a new life. Okay. And why do you want to create a new life? Um, I, I don't know. I'm just, I want to be able to go out and hike and walk the desert and find some lakes where I can swim and paddleboard and do water recreation. Yes. And Is there anything else about your life that you want to be new? 
relationships. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. Uh, um, more business, you know, helping okay. more people. Create can, your you, can you get more specific with me on that? Sorry. Can you get on, can, on the business part? Yeah. Helping more people, helping more of my clients find success in their business, helping them to create six and seven um, dollar figures. Okay. Um, and help them to get their message out and build funnels and um, just create their dreams that they want to have, helping them with their goals. Is there, is there a, okay, let me see here. Is there a monetary thing, goal that you have? I do have a monetary goal this year. It is, I, it's, um, I'm a big fan of ClickFunnels and my goal this year is to reach a um, hundred, not a hundred, um, a million dollars so that I can do a funnel okay. Okay. Um, to get the Two Comma Club Award. Okay, awesome. Yes, can you visualize, what would, what, how would you feel if you got that Two Comma Club Award? Super excited. I'd be excited to be walking, you know, in the room, in the room at the event that's coming up. I believe it's in Florida this year. Can't remember exactly where it's at. And being able to be with um, certain friends and my team, and you know, the walk across the stage and get the get the award, mm -hmm. and have the award to put on my wall and it's, it's kind of like a prestigious um you know it has a lot of prestigious meaning to it like oh, yes. i did this i created this yes and it's not even like i'm not even thinking about the money part of it okay so like a million dollars is so big and so it's a huge thing it's just like yes i'd be able i'd be able to create a lot of things in my life um, by moving and, you know, it's having a successful business, you know, you know, creating successful summits. I've moved into the whole summit world, not just doing funnels anymore, but doing yes. um, funnels around summits. Yes, yes, yes. Which puts you around, they always talk about the people that you surround yourself with. Um, it puts you around a lot of high achievers, people who are creating new things, people who are on the move, people who have got things going on and they're creating new things. So that is a great wealth expander too, you know, mm -hmm. just all the connections. Um, okay, so let me see. Um, I could think of a couple of different ways to go about this. So is this in 12 months that you want the 1 million or what is the cutoff for that? December 31st of 2021. Of this year. Okay. Sure. All right. We've got a date. December 31st, 2021. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So we've got a very distinct goal here and it involves summits and funnels. Um, this new life in Arizona. <clears throat> Let's see. Okay. So here's one thing we're going to do. Let's go to... What do you think is it? Why do you think you don't have that right now? Well, I don't I think I don't have it right now because I can see my bank account. No, what was that? Because it's not in my bank account. Okay, it's because it's not in your bank account. And I mean the whole thing, the Arizona, the whole nine yards. Yeah. Um, um, well, with Arizona, I think some of it has to do with, with um, my relationship with some of my family. Okay. You no, know, I have parents that are getting older. Yes. And so the connecting with my parents, uh -huh. uh, part of part of me is sad about about um, right now. I can get in my car and drive twenty minutes and be at my parents' house in the ranch that they have, and yeah. But that's part of it's something that I'm gonna miss. Yes. Um, are you when you're in Arizona? Will, will you be near an airport or anything? Or yeah, I'll be in your the phoenix airport okay <clears throat> and i mean how quickly could you be home with them once you move um half a day probably half a day. okay okay maybe a full day depending on everything okay um and they could come see you yes they could okay yes um and when you're rolling in the dough, you're going to be able to afford a private uh, 
<laughs> private jets. So, you know, you may get there a lot quicker. <laughs> so, um, okay. So we know why, okay. Is there any other reason why you think that, that you haven't um, gotten any of, any of these goals in this direction yet, like towards the direction of these goals yet? Any other things like? Maybe fear. You said okay. the unknown of, of moving out of, of um, right now, you know, I'm near my parents, so I have the support of my parents yes. and, yes. Um, or family, you know, or um, my support system. Okay. Okay. But a lot of my support system is online. Yeah, okay. <laughs> the virtual yes. space. So that's not going to go anywhere, correct? Right. right. Okay. That support system is portable. Mm -hmm. um, okay. And there are, and so, okay. All right. Well, let's see. I, I don't have any, I don't know what our time is like here. I have no idea what time we started, but um, we're good. How about if we go quickly just to a little sort of mindset shift thing? I'm going to take you into a little quick deep meditation, maybe five minutes. So, all right, CN, you're, you're right where you, I see you seated in the chair. You can feel your, what they call your sits bones if you do yoga, or they can call the back of your thigh um, leaning, it, it's pressing against the chair. You might feel your back supported by the chair. <clears throat> your feet are touching the ground. You can feel your feet touching the ground, connecting with that. Just close your eyes and take a deep breath in. And then exhale out. Take another long, slow, deep breath in. And exhale back out. And one more, we're going to breathe in all the wonderful things that you want to create in your life. We're going to exhale out all the things that have been in the way of that. We'll breathe in one more time. We're going to breathe in wild success for you. I want to exhale out any false beliefs about money and what you might be able to do and the fear of the unknown. We're just going to bring in the creator and we're going to have him come in through your head and just come in through your forehead and just relax your forehead. Just relax your head, relax your mind. We're going to relax your eyebrows, We're going to relax your ears, your eyes, your cheeks, your jaws, your mouth. We're going to relax your neck, your shoulders, relax your arms, your hands. Relax your chest. We're going to relax your heart. We're actually going to welcome into your heart divine sacred wealth. We're going to bring into your heart the wealth with the spirit of wealth, the way and the intention and the receipt of wealth, just the way when Jesus was born, the wise man brought gold frankincense and myrrh. Frankincense and myrrh by themselves were very priceless at the time. And then they brought gold. They brought this to honor him. This was received by Joseph and Mary and it was appreciated greatly. That helped to help to support them and pay for things that they needed to do. So money is a really beautiful thing. And it can be amplified by the heart of the person receiving the wealth. It then multiplies over and over and you can do so many beautiful things with it. You can help so many people. This effect 
can just be replicated where, and one of the things you're talking about, CN, is you're talking about helping other people to get their businesses out there and you're supporting them to really also create wealth for themselves, for their families, for their generations, and also for all the people that will look at their funnels and will receive their services. And so this is just this vast network of wealth created all around all of us. We all have the power to be able to do this. And <clears throat> we the most essential part of this is being open to receiving it feeling 100% worthy and 100% loved enough that you get this wealth coming to you because wealth is a tool. Wealth is a symbol of all the things you can do with it. Wealth is freedom. Wealth is the ability to create every single fabulous thing that you've ever wanted to create out there in the world in the way that you personally would do it that will impact the people that are drawn to you so that you can create, again, ripples of wealth all around. Just, it's never ending. And it just keeps going and going and going. And as people become open to this, you can see your role in this whole process and how valuable it is. And so the more open you are, to loving yourself and receiving the bounty. I'm gonna call it bounty. I'm gonna call it abundance. All of this goodness, all of these things coming through to you. And you're saying, yes, Lord, more Lord. And you're really prepared for it. The more that you can continue to again, amplify it, amplify it, multiply it like the talents. Again, here we go. The one who amplified the talents was rewarded. Okay, and for those of you who, who may not know what I'm speaking about, there were talents given to different people, and they mentioned this in the Bible, and those who actually multiplied their talents and did things with them, they were rewarded with more talents. Talents were values, that, like, I guess a monetary value, you'd say, and the ones who buried them in a hole in the ground... <laughs> they theirs were taken away they thought they were they were scared and they were trying to protect it so when we go into fear and we think we're protecting we're actually destroying so one thing to remember is fear is a destructive mode love is a creative mode love is receptive love is amplifying this is what we want to do is keep amplifying, amplifying, amplifying all of this goodness, all the abundance and wealth. And we want to be the ones that are honored by saying, you have really multiplied what I gave you. You've just made it. Look at all these people you positively impacted in your life. Look at all the good you've done. And you've been grateful for what you were given. And therefore you have put it out there so that others would continue to amplify and be wealthy and grow. So this is the whole key. It's almost like when you're at, <clears throat> when you ever, if have you ever been at some kind of a service and they have a, a candle and they light it and then that person lights the next person next to them. And then and you look around at first, the whole room's dark and then you see candle after candle after candle after candle. And pretty soon you look around you and the whole room is filled with lighted candles. That's exactly what you, CN, are doing as you continue forward on this path. This summit path is a perfect example of amplifying, multiplying the wealth. You're bringing together all these different people. So they're all amplifying their wealth of all types. And then they are gonna impact all these other people that may or may not be attracted to each individual speaker. You are amplifying because you brought a bunch of different speakers that will touch the hearts of people who are drawn to them specifically. So it's all a part of this. And you're, you're following that path and you're seeing yourself in, well, I said Sedona, whoops. I don't think you said Sedona. <laughs> Could that be something? I love Sedona, it's crazy good. But anyway, that's what came to me. So perhaps you're going to be in Sedona, which everyone wants to come check out. So you would draw people to you if you had some sort of retreats or things there. Holy cow. Anyway, that just came through. So perhaps you might want to think about that. But yes, 
all these things you're just bringing into all your life, all the things you always wanted. There's no reason for any of us to go without these things. So every single dream that you had, that you were, a lot of these were placed into us when we came through every single thing like that, all the things you've always wanted, the things that touch the core of you, the things that light you up like a Christmas tree, the things that you just love, all the joy. This is what you want to keep, I guess, thinking about and feeling and putting your mind on. And that's right out of the Bible pretty much too. (laughs) So all these things are coming out of there, but you put your heart and mind and soul and wrap around those things. And you believe those things and the other things go out the window. They have zero power. The only time those things have any power, the negative things is when you give them to them or I give them to them. But the great thing about that is that shows you that you have control over it. So you just shift that thought, feeling, or idea. And all of a sudden you're creating all these great experiences. You're in Sedona, you're living there. You have all these wonderful new friends and relationships and businesses booming and people are coming into flying in there to see you. You're having these summits. You're having in-person summits. You're having, you know, virtual summits. It's all happening. And there's all this fantastic energy out there. It's Sedona. It's like all of that going on there. And you're thinking, my goodness, I, I have the ability to do this. I could be there right now. I could be there right now. And so you put yourself there now, emotionally, mentally, physically, spiritually. So CN, you are already in Sedona. You're already holding these summits. You're already doing fantastically well with the funnels and with all this wealth creation. You're already there. You already have all these fantastic relationships. You're already looking around going, this is awesome. I am so excited to be here. Wow, this is the best thing. I I remember looking back before and look, I'm here now and I'm just gonna keep moving forward. And you're already there. And what you do, every time you do this, you've already created this. You've already created it. And the reality out, if you wanna call it reality, (laughs) the external uh, is going to catch up with you because you're already there. You've already believed it, spoken it, felt it, and thought it into existence. And it's the same thing with physical health. It starts up here. It starts with the thoughts, feelings, beliefs, and emotions. And this is backed up by science. Um, Let me see, I'm gonna think of some of these authors. The Biology of Belief is one book about this. Um, There are a number of them. Um, you, You Are the Placebo is another book about that. So that it's our thoughts that actually help to create or to take away something we don't want. We can, we can just extinguish that with the neuro pathways in our brain. So this new life, you have created it already while we've been having this session. You already created it, it already exists and you're just gonna be reinforcing it so that you are there and you'll be calling me up saying, you're right, I created it, here I am. Come out here and say anything. <laughs> and I'll say, if you go to Sedona, I'll see you. <laughs> so, um, so I already see it, it's already there. And this is a fantastic thing that anyone can do. And what you can do is you can also, I mean, I can take, take it into the getting rid of any let's say any generational limits that you might have, anything in your whole family line going all the way back, all the way forward and in the present, just we're just cleansing every single part of that DNA structure from anything that would limit you. It's all gone, it's dissolved away. And what we have is limitlessness. And that's what we've got going on here for the whole family line. It's been cleared and we're just living up to our full potential here. There are no holds barred. Just, it's just really fulfilling every single purpose for which you were created and just all the joy and exuberance and prosperity. and fabulous wealth and abundance. It's all there for not only for you, but for your whole family line. We've just cleared and cleansed that whole thing. And uh, also, let's see what else we can, (laughs) any mindsets, we've already gone with the mindsets. 
Um, we're also going to take it out of your DNA, which we've done right there. We're going to re regenerate all the cells, all the brain cells. We're just going to regenerate all those to a, a healthy, wealthy mindset in every single way. They're all being restructured back to that divine, perfect DNA. So uh, all these things are just going to keep happening and it's already been created and we just are gonna, you're gonna be taking these steps one by one and you're gonna see it fulfill itself day by day by day in the external because you've already created it. It's already in existence. So with that being said, I just took a deep breath. Whew. So you gotta feel, feel the back of your legs uh, against the chair and also feel your back pressing against the back of the chair. Feel your feet pressing on the floor. Take a deep breath in. Breathe in the knowledge you've done this. And release the past. Take another deep breath in. You're coming back to the present. And breathe a deep breath out. You're happy. You're grateful. You're grateful that all this is coming true for you. You may want to just tap your feet on the floor a little bit to bring yourself back here. <laughs> yes. And move around a little bit. Just nudge your shoulders and you're fully back here. Yeah. Wow. So how's it feel, rock star? Amazing. I feel relaxed and I'm <laughs> Sedona. I love Sedona. Actually, I've never been to Sedona, but I've always wanted to go to Sedona. And it's beautiful, beautiful. So... Yeah. I've actually thought about Sedona before, but not sure. But I'm open to that possibility. One yeah. thing I wanted to say, because I was like, as I was going in, my dog, Petey, is like on the couch beside me. And she was, um, she was, when you said breathe in and breathe out, she was doing the same thing. I love it. We have a, we have a, a little doggy. I was going to say, well, yeah. See, a meditation doggy. Yep. Petey, Petey, my meditation doggy. How funny. She to Sedona too. She heard me. <laughs> she heard me. How did you feel physically when we were doing that? Um, I think at first I had a little bit of um, fear, uh -huh. you know, thinking about the big, the big picture of my goals. I do have, um, I will say this, um, just as a disclaimer, because for a lot of people, a million dollars you know, you walk into a conference and people have like, oh, I want to create a million dollars. And often it's kind of like a big wit, you know, it's just like, whatever, you know, I actually have a business coach. I have a marketing coach. I have a Facebook ad coach. <laughs> and so, um, and mindset coach. <laughs> and, and so it's just like, I'm not just like doing this, like, I'm not just throwing paint on the wall saying, oh, I'm going to create a million dollars this year. I have a plan. I have a, a business plan, a structure, and everything mapped out to have that success behind me. So it's not just some like, oh, I want to, I want to get a two comma club award and I'm doing this. Um, actually, I'm paying for coaching to get me from where I where I was at the beginning of the year and where I want to be at the end of the year. So but um feeling having a little bit of fear and anxiety of um, stuff that came up at the beginning definitely because what I'm doing is definitely stepping in this yeah. what I call like my future self yes the the woman that has the tenacity and the confidence and the capability I mean, I am capable, and, you know, into that woman that's at the end of the year that's creating this. And a lot of it's uncomfortable. Y yes. Um, that's, ex that's perfect that you said that <laughs> because a huge part of what I have felt for myself and I have been addressing is I have dumbed myself down. I have dimmed my light. I have not wanted to outshine anyone. Heaven forbid we do that. So if it's been in a relationship, if it's been at the job, you know, at my workplace, if it's been in school, if I start to shine really brightly and then I look around and I see people like, oh, here we go. So <laughs> then it was like, you know, dim the light 
other people are uncomfortable. If you shine as brightly as you can, well, that's false, negative. We're not going to do them anymore. We're not going to cover mm -hmm. over our dreams. We're not going to try to fit into Susie or Harry or Frank's box. We're going to go boom. And we're just going to do everything, everything that we're capable of to the maximum potential. So you are stepping into your future self. And, and I love that you said it because it's present tense. It's like you're already doing it. You know, I, you're stepping into it. It's, it's already happening. And it, it is uncomfortable because why? Because our brain feels better, feels like this is more normal if you stay where you were. It's scary if we do anything else. And we can all relate to that because that's a primitive part of our brain. And it's whole purpose is to keep us safe, right? Yes. So in this day and age, without the, um, lot, you know, something going to eat us or whatever, back in prehistoric times, now the thing that we, that that brain kicks in on is anything different. Whoa, let's just stay where we are, even if it is unpleasant, even if it's mm -hmm. way dimmed down for what you're capable of, even if you're frustrated like crazy, like I can do so much more than this. Your brain's like, it's okay, stay there, it's safe, <laughs> you know? Absolutely. But it's not because it's actually destroying your dreams. So mm -hmm. that this is, and, and everybody feels that discomfort. Every time we try something new, it's like, oh gosh, this is uncomfortable. And that's that part of the brain. So we just have to go, okay, okay, CN, the part of your brain that's uncomfortable with that is, is real. We've all got that. Mm -hmm. And you just have to address it and say, I hear you. I hear you, but we're going to go ahead and do this and it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. I understand why you're saying that to me a little CN. We're going to say little CN. Exactly. I don't know why you're saying that because you think you're protecting me, but we can go way beyond this. And I am going to make sure that you are taken care of and we're going to do this together. And you, you're going to be so thrilled once we're on the other side of this. So right. trust me in this. And so you just talk to yourself with compassion and mm -hmm. that's how you get to the other side. Yeah. And the truth is a lot of those programs or beliefs or what's protecting you. Yes. Um, is, or that's controlling you is your three or four year old self. Yes. <laughs> so yeah. you're, you're making an agreement. I mean, I've done a lot of this work this year mm -hmm. of like, of the stories and breaking the patterns of my subconscious. It's like, I'm allowing these agreements that I made as a three or four year old child or yeah. you know, through elementary school mm -hmm. to control my life. Yes. And, and when I realized that, I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> that's great. I know. I know. It's like someone approaches you with this fantastic opportunity and, and you're going to let a three-year-old decide whether to do it or not. I mean, that's, that's what we're doing. Okay. <laughs> so it's like, uh, no, you know, but, um, but it's as common and this isn't like to, to, to kick anybody or anything because we all have a propensity to do that. It's just a question of retraining that and creating new neuro pathway and catching that the minute you do it and go, that's not true. <laughs> what it's is true? Safe, like you said. Yes, that's what it's doing. And um, the safest thing you can do is be wealthy. <laughs> It's in every way I'm talking about with love, all the things I've talked about, every type of abundance, that's the safest thing you can do because then you can, you, you have the money to help others. You have the money to do what you were born to do. You have the money to obviously pay for anything that you might need. Um, you have the money to keep expanding and growing and putting new things that you have to offer the world out there. I mean, there is no downside to it. And the money, if you're a good person and you become wealthy, you're going to be a wealthy, good person. That's just how it works. You know, if somebody mm -hmm. happens to have a lot, some things going on that aren't wonderful about themselves and they get wealthy, guess what? They're going to be somebody who's wealthy that doesn't have some great things going on. It's yeah. not the wealth that determines that. Okay. And I, th I grew up thinking uh, things other than that, like, you know, so I've had to break that off. So yeah, it's only going to amplify if you're a fantastic person, you're just going to be, you're going to be able to do so much more. Thank you, Mary, so much for meeting with me today. I appreciate you. That was super fun. I'm going to put the link down below the video so that people can connect with you.